Hi there and welcome to this day in history for May 20th. May 20th is the 140th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 141st in leap years with 225 days remaining to the end of the year. In honor of a pioneer of beekeeping, and we'll talk about him in a minute, May 20 is World Bee Day. World Bee Day seeks to raise awareness and acknowledge the role of bees and other pollinators in the ecosystem. Bees are pretty important, and Slovenia's proposal to the UN for World Bee Day was approved in December of 2017. Today's word is apiary. Apiary is a noun that means a place where bees are kept, especially a collection of hives or colonies of bees kept for their honey. Expanding on that, apiculture is the care of honeybees that ensures they produce more honey than they can use. An apiary usually consists of many separate beehives. The word apiary comes to us from Latin apis, which means bee, and the suffix arium, which means a place for. So, a place for bees. Apiary. First known use of the word apiary is in the 1650s. Apiary. Remember, if you have a word you'd like us to explore in this Word of the Day segment, drop it in the comments. We'll take a look at it. And with that, this is the birthday of Anton Jansha, born sometime around May 20th, 1734. I say it that way because records were kept differently in those days. May 20 was the day he was baptized. So that's what we're going with. He was born in a place called Carniola, which is now part of Slovenia. The family had an art studio in their barn, and Anton and two of his brothers showed an early interest in painting. Those three boys went to Vienna and entered the Painters' Academy there. Anton's brother Lovro, better known as Lorenz Janja, completed his studies and went on to become a professor there. Here's one of the brothers' paintings. Anton was also artistically talented, but found that he was more interested in beekeeping. His father had had over 100 hives, and when neighboring farmers would gather, beekeeping was one of the topics they would discuss. Anton wrote a couple of books on the subject of beekeeping, the discussion of beekeeping, and a full guide to beekeeping. And after he died, Empress Maria Theresa decreed that all teachers of agriculture should use Jansha's books. One of Jansha's innovations in beekeeping is that he changed the size and shape of beehives so that they could be stacked like blocks. Having some artistic talent, he also decorated the fronts of hives with paintings. He figured the queen was fertilized mid-air, as happens to be the case, and advocated moving hives to pastures. Interesting to note that all new discoveries by Anton Jansha were later confirmed by the science. I was surprised to learn that he died at a relatively young age of 39, but I was not able to discover what took him. Anton Jansha. In the 1800s, the United States was spreading across the North American continent. On May 20, 1862, President Abraham Lincoln signed the Homestead Act into law. The Homestead Act had been created in an effort to encourage people to settle and develop the territories, a great opportunity for all sorts of people. With a few exceptions, one had to be at least 21 years of age or the head of a household, be a U.S. citizen or intend to become one. The homesteader then had to live on the property, build a dwelling, and cultivate a portion of the land for at least five years. Once these were achieved, the homesteader could pay a small fee and apply for a land patent or deed, and then they would become the legal owner of the property. This wasn't as easy as it sounds, and some people were not able to prove out as in building a building, cultivating the land, and living there for five years. And Native American tribes got displaced right and left. But here we are, many of us west of the Mississippi River, because our ancestors took advantage of the Homestead Act. The Homestead Act, by the way, remained in effect until the enactment of the Federal Land Policy and Management Act of 1976. This is the birthday of John Robert Cocker, born May 20, 1944, in Sheffield, England. 
He acquired the nickname of Joe as a child, and that's how we know him as Joe Cocker. Joe's first experience singing in public was when he was 12. His older brother invited him on stage to sing during a gig of his skiffle group. In 1961, he used the stage name Vance Arnold and formed a group called Vance Arnold and the Avengers. He was signed to a record contract in 1964 as a solo artist, but that didn't take off and the contract lapsed. Joe did some other things, worked as a gas fitter as a day job while playing in bands and pubs on the side for the next few years. He recorded with a little help from my friends in 1968, which initially got to number 35 on the American charts and eventually achieving gold record status. Joe and his band went on an American tour in 1969. One of the gigs they played was the Woodstock Festival in August of 1969, a pivotal event for him and his career. After that, he was tired and he didn't want to tour anymore and he dissolved the band but another American tour had already been booked, a big commitment to Phil. I believe we've touched on this before, but Leon Russell knew a lot of musicians in the industry and helped Joe put together a band that they called Mad Dogs and Englishmen. Mad Dogs and Englishmen toured 48 cities and recorded a live album, received favorable reviews. From there, he would alternate between wanting to take some time off, going on some tours, and some studio time. His discography includes 22 studio albums, 9 live albums, 14 compilation albums, and 68 singles. His music has been used in various forms of popular culture, such as TV shows and movies. Joe Cocker developed lung cancer and died on December 22nd, 2014 at the age of 70. Joe Cocker. Be sure to check out our How About That and the There's a Word for That playlists to see about other single subjects we've covered. I'll leave links to those for you. With a little help from my friends was written by John Lennon and Paul McCartney and originally appeared on the Beatles album Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band in 1967. Joe Cocker covered the song as the title track for his album With a Little Help from My Friends, released in 1969. The song also appears on Joe Cocker's Live at Woodstock album. This version was also used as the opening theme for the television show, The Wonder Years, which ran from 1988 to 1993. While looking for links to the song, I found other covers of it as well and have included three links in the description. Great song with a little help from my friends, no matter who sings it. <laughs> links in the description. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with a link in your email, messaging, or social media. If you enjoy this series, you can check out the playlist that contains these videos. I'll put a link to that in the description. That description lives on YouTube, so for other platforms, I'll include a link to my blog page that's called No Really. <laughs> You can also find me on Rumble, a bit shoot, and Odyssey. All those links in that description. Alrighty, that's all I can think of right now. Thanks again and all. See you next time. Alrighty, back to work. I think we got it this time.